I'm Elizabeth, out a literary princess. If you are new here, welcome. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read, hence the booktube channel, because I also love sharing what I'm reading with other people and hearing about what all of you are reading. Today I have my February wrap up for you. So in February, I was participating in two events and I also had two carryover books from January that I didn't finish that were for my dissertation. And then there was one fun book in here, just that my hold came in for the library. So six is a little bit less than usual, but one of these books should count for at least two, probably more like three books because of its length. So let's jump in. First, a little bit about the two readathons I was participating in. The first is Fab Regency, which is a readathon devoted to reading books from and about the Regency period. It is hosted by Emma from Bookish Princess, Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, Tristan from Tristan and the Classics, and Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads. So I actually only finished one book for that, but I I'm also still reading a nonfiction book called Sister Novelists by Devani Lucer, which is about the authors Jane and Anna Maria Porter, who were Regency writers who we don't really remember much anymore. So I'm still about halfway through that and we'll be finishing that in March. And the other readathon I was participating in is the We Love Jenny readathon. And this was hosted by Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space and Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia. And this readathon was in honor of Jennifer Brooks, a wonderful YouTuber who unfortunately passed away very suddenly in January. So this was all about reading books that Jenny loved and had recommended and reading things about subjects she loves. So I had two books for that. So we will start with the two carryovers from January, which are both dissertation reads. And I have physical copies of both, but they are now on campus. So editing Elizabeth is not going to be very happy with me. But we don't take editing Elizabeth into account when we're filming. Maybe we should. I don't know. Anyway, the first book is Margaret Oliphant, A Critical Biography by Marin Williams. This is the third biography of Margaret Oliphant I've read in the past like six months. <laughs> and that's not including her autobiography. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm writing a chapter on Margaret Oliphant. <laughs> You'll be able to tell that from the second book too. I gave this three stars. So I have a hierarchy <laughs> of biographies of Margaret Oliphant. The top tier one is Elizabeth Jay's 1995 or something biography of her. Elizabeth Jay is amazing and has done lots of great work for Margaret Oliphant and is very respectful of her. And I love her. <laughs> I love you, Elizabeth Jay. Um, Marin Williams is the next step down. Her biography was in the published in the 80s. And she calls her Margaret throughout, which made me want to throw hands, to be perfectly honest. I'm like, she's not your friend. She's not your friend. I'm fine with referring to authors and their first names in like casual settings, like here on YouTube. Like, fine. If I'm absolutely fine if you want to be like <laughs> my guy Bill Shakespeare <laughs> like that fine it's YouTube when you're writing a biography of the person I'm like you should not be calling them by their first name so that really bothered me however Williams is a lot better than the previous biographers um Robert and Vanita Vanita Colby who wrote a biography in I believe the 60s that was just I had to look them up to make sure they were dead because otherwise I wanted to track them down and fight them but you can't fight dead people so you know 
It was so condescending. <laughs> so Williams's biography has a little bit of that condescension, but it's not nearly so bad. I'm still bothered by her calling her Margaret. Like, no. Call her Oliphant, fine. Or Mrs. Oliphant, which is what Elizabeth Jay chooses to do. And Jay has a very detailed explanation for why she is using Mrs. Oliphant instead of just calling her Oliphant, which is traditionally how you refer to authors. You use their last name. Anyway, yeah, this biography was fine. It's like... It did give me a lot of good sources to go and look at and like a lot of good primary sources, a lot of um, articles that were published in the 19th century. So I was able to find a lot of stuff with that. I'm glad I read it. It was not my favorite. Three stars. And next up, I did a quick reread. I don't know how quick it actually was, but of Salem Chapel by Margaret Oliphant. So I am working on a conference paper version of what will eventually be a dissertation chapter. Possibly two dissertation chapters kind of merged into one, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And it is talking in part about Salem Chapel. This is the fourth work in the chronicle. No, fifth. For fourth, fifth, fourth, fourth. I can count. Fourth work in the Car Chronicles of Carlingford series, it follows Arthur Vincent, who is a dissenting minister who has just come to Carlingford to minister at Salem Chapel. And we have this kind of dual plot of a sensation plot line involving his sister and a woman that he meets called Mrs. Hilliard, who is not what she seems. And then we also have Arthur Vincent's struggle of yeah, him having very high ideals and like really wanting to change the world and then he gets to Salem Chapel and it's a congregation of very middle working class like shopkeepers and dairymen and grocers and he considers them kind of vulgar and they really just like want him to preside at their tea parties and do exactly what they want and he's not about that. So it's this dual plot line which is part of what I'm talking about in my conference paper but anyway I enjoyed this book. I had read it last year early in the year I think and I gave it four stars then and I gave it four stars now. Next up was my just like one it my hold came in on the library finally. I've had this hold on since the beginning of the year, possibly before. And this is Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. This came out in 2023. I was very excited for it. I love the Heartstopper series. It follows Nick and Charlie, who are two high school students who fall in love. It's so cute. It is a graphic novel. I love it. I love it. I have actually read all the pieces of, the, of volume five before on Tumblr. The um, author posts them as a web, it's a web comic, but I have not read them in the proper order. I don't go out of my way to find them. I just like read them if they come up on my dashboard. So reading them in like the right order is always really nice. Why would we read things in order? But yeah, I gave this five stars. I love this series so much. There's going to be one more volume, volume six, that I'm so excited for. All right, and now we get into the books I actually read for the readathons. And the first was one for the We Love Jenny readathon. This is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. Um, Ava Reed is, honestly, I'm going to say it, one of my new favorite fantasy authors. This is the third book I've read by her and I really enjoyed all three books so I can call her a favorite author now. This is a young adult fantasy, Dark Academia. It is following Effie who is an the only female architecture student at her university but she really wants to be in the literature program. They just don't allow women into the literature program. And she is obsessed with this author whose name, Murden, Emrys Murden, who wrote, um, is it a novel or a, 
an epic, an epic um, that she adores. And she gets the chance to design a renovation for the guy's house. He is dead, but his son is overseeing this. So she gets to go to the house and there she meets another scholar from her university named, are we not gonna have his, ah, there we go, Preston. I thought that was his name. I'm very bad with character names. <laughs> Um, Preston, who is a literature student studying Murden and trying to claim that Murden did not write his works. So th there's all kinds of fantasy with the fairy king. I, I love it. Love it. I gave this five stars. Um, it was one of Jenny's favorites of last year, I believe, and I had wanted to read it anyway because I knew I liked Ava Reed, but when the We Love Jenny readathon came up, I was like, ah, perfect timing because Jenny had really enjoyed this, and I completely see why I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, my, like, I get um, five stars. I wish that it had been an adult book and not a young adult book. This was Reed's young adult debut. She usually writes adult books. And I was like, I wish it were an adult book because it would have been A, longer, and B, would have kind of gone into more detail with some of the darker stuff. Reed writes very dark material. Juniper and Thorn is, whew, whew, heavy. And there is that in here, but because it's young adult, like we kind of pull back from it a little bit. And I wish we'd just gotten to explore more of it. And yeah, I would have loved for this to be longer. This is only it's under 400 pages. I would have happily had like another 150, 200 pages. So yes, I did really love this though. Highly recommend. Now we get to the one that should count for three. And this is the only book that I finished for Feb Regency. <laughs> this is Cecilia by Frances Burney. Look at that. It should count for three books. At least two. Come on. It's a thousand pages with the notes, 900 and something without. It, it's massive. It took me most of the month to read. However, this is a new favorite of mine. I gave this five stars. I absolutely adored it. This follows a young woman, Cecilia, who her, she has been raised by her uncle who has now passed away and he leaves her in the care of three guardians who all are terrible in their own unique way. And she has only about a year until she becomes a no longer a minor, basically. She is 20 when it starts. I think she turns 21. And this is just her in society. There are so many shenanigans <laughs> going on in this book. It's really funny, but there's also some really serious stuff. Um, this is, I'm going to try to not make this spoilerly, spoiler, spoilerly, Bleh. I can talk. Um, but I do want to give a trigger warning. So this is technically a spoiler, but I'm not going to say who it involves. There is a suicide in this. And I was very surprised at how frankly it was talked about. Um, because I'm used to like the Victorian books that I've read that involve it. Like they kind of hint at it, but they don't like come out and directly say it. Whereas this not only comes out and directly says it, I mean, we're basically there when it happens. So that, I think that is important for people to know going in, there is that. I'm not going to tell you who it is or when it happens or any of the details involved, but that, that is there. And I was surprised at how frankly Bernie talked about it because I wasn't expecting that, especially from a woman author in the region, say. But I love this. Like, I know it looks super scary because it's ginormous, but it's actually really readable. I found it very easy to read. And I don't know if that's just because I've been reading George Eliot for like a year now <laughs> in publication order and now everything seems easy to me, but I found it so readable and I just 
really enjoyed it. And this does contain the quote um, that seems to have given Jane Austen her title for Pride and Prejudice, which is rather fun. So yeah, absolute new favorite. Loved it. All right, and the final read is another one for the We Love Jenny readathon. This was the group read because it was Jenny's favorite book of 2023. And this is The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. So this has a dual timeline. In the present day, we follow Emily, who is going to Italy with her friend Chess. And they have, it's like not, it's kind of a frenemy relationship. Emily gets very irritated with Chess. They are both writers. Chess has been more successful. Emily is newly divorced because her husband cheated on her. And they go to this villa together. And back in the 70s at this villa, there was a group of artists and musicians and writers who stayed there that are a modernized version of the Byron Shelley party that stayed in um, Geneva back when, you know, Frankenstein was written. So we've got um, Mary, I forget her last name, but so we've got Noel Gordon as our Lord Byron character, Pierce Sheldon as Percy Shelley, Mary as Mary Shelley, and her stepsister Laura as um, Claire Claremont. And we know from the beginning there is a murder that happens there. And so Emily becomes very interested in this and she ends up finding some diary papers that were Mary's. So we get this kind of, you know, dual, dual story of what's going on with the modern day and then what's going on in the 70s with these musicians and writers and their cr like crazy rock and roll drugs and alcohol and you know what sex and what you might expect <laughs> which is basically what happened in Geneva. <laughs> so I did enjoy this a lot. I gave it four stars. The thing with dual timelines is I think there's always one that you're a little more invested in and for a while I was more invested in Emily and Chess and what was going on with them and I was kind of like well why did we need to update the Byron Shelley trip to be in the 70s I was like I don't really I was like eh, eh. but I did end up liking it by the end I really liked what Hawkins did with the ending that's all I'll say for both for both timelines actually for both timelines I really liked what she did with the ending for each of them. So yeah, this was really good. I see why Jenny loved it so much. Four stars. Definitely check it out if it sounds like something that would interest you. It's fun to see the the updating of the 19th century literary figures into these 1970s musicians and things. It's, it's a lot of fun. So that was my February wrap up. Let me know down in the comments below. What did you read in February? Have you read any of these? What did you think of them? Were you participating in any readathons and what did you read for them? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.